Hey everyone, today I want to show you one of the most interesting types of microphones I've come across so far. This is the LAM Geophone. Now the Geophone is actually a geo microphone that is intended for seismic measurements. So it's basically a contact microphone that's really, really sensitive. Now contact mics are a pretty specific type of mic as well. They pick up vibrations not through the air, but through solid objects. So you attach them to something and whatever is going on in that object, it'll pick up the sounds of it. If you've ever leaned your head up against something, maybe put it down on a desk, or a table and had your ear kind of pressed down on it, that muffled perception of everything that you get from that is basically what a contact mic or the geophone itself would pick up. Now that can be really useful in sound design and recording the world in a very different way than you're used to hearing it. So I want to show you some interesting examples of how this mic sounds and give you some ideas on how you might use it in sound design. Before we get started, if you find these videos useful, you want to support my channel, head over to alexnickerbacher.com. I've got a huge collection of royalty free sound effects that I've curated from my own library for your personal use. They've all been professionally recorded with top of the line gear and they're tagged with metadata that you'd find in any major studio's sound effects library. So pick up any of those or if you feel like making a donation, anything really helps me spend more time on this channel making these major studio techniques and ideas more accessible to everybody. Now I mentioned that the Geophone is a modified seismic microphone and what that means is you can use it with any standard field recording gear where ordinarily you wouldn't be able to. So this is a fantastic thing to take around and actually, again, hear the world in a different way with any field recorder that you might have. Because the way contact mics pick up sound, and again, it's through solid objects, it's not actually sounds moving through the air, you don't get a lot of noise contamination from things like cars or traffic or planes or any of the other stuff that you'd ordinarily have to think about when you're recording. They're only gonna have problems with either the actual noise of the circuitry that they're either built with or that they're running through on the recording end, or any RF interference or maybe movement from whatever object you've got them attached to. So they're a great way to isolate really unique sounds from the rest of the environment. But again, they're really kind of not gonna give you what you'd expect out of those ordinary sounds. So sort of a give and take. And again, they're really specific in application. As far as price point goes, I'd say the LAM Geophone comes in right around the high midpoint of contact mics. You can get contact mics for as cheap as five or $10 a piece if you buy something that's either do it yourself Yourself, or it's really, really basic in the way it's set up. It doesn't have any shielded cables. It's a really small element and it's not the best build quality in the world. At the high end and probably what you'd find most commonly in the post-production sound recording realm is the Barkus Berry 4000 Planner Mic Series. And these are specifically contact mics built around the idea of recording pianos in the cleanest possible way. Because again, a piano is gonna resonate. It's gonna have all this character resonating through the wood and how these strings are moving and sort of playing off the entire instrument itself as you play a piano. The Barkus Berries are a really good set of contact mics that you can place around the piano in different ways, and so you get a lot of interesting vocabulary out of it. And because those mics are really built to attach to pretty much any type of surface and be really sensitive to the full frequency spectrum, again, pianos have a lot of low end, a lot of high end, and a lot of resonance and harmonics in there, they make great sound effects recording mics in the post-production world. The Lom Geophone generally goes for around $200 or around 155 euros. The big problem and really kind of the only problem I have with it is LAM doesn't make very many of them at one time, so they're kind of hard to get your hands on. But if you do, and they generally send out some sort of email newsletter saying, hey, we're gonna get a few more in stock, highly, highly worth it. I think these are really fascinating sound effects recording microphones, and they cover a wide array of things that you really didn't even know existed unless you have a contact mic to begin with. So I wanna show you a few examples of what you can do with a mic like this. And I'm gonna record just some ordinary everyday objects and then process them so you can get the difference between between just the raw recording straight out of the mic and the kinds of things you can come up with from a sound design perspective. I'm gonna be recording into a Sound Devices 833, which is basically the cleanest, quietest set of mobile preamps you can get as far as recording goes at this point. So everything you're gonna hear is going to showcase the microphone's character, all its flaws, all its nuances, and all the different things you can do on the sound design end without introducing really any coloration from the preamps or the recording devices itself.
Real quick, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community where members can find thousands of inspiring classes to explore new skills, dive deeper into passions, and really lose themselves in creativity. Whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just starting out, you'll be able to discover new ways to build and hone real-world skills that are taught by creative professionals who empower you to grow. Skillshare curates ad-free classes that are entirely dedicated to learning, and they're constantly adding more premium classes, so you can explore at your own pace and focus entirely on creativity. When I'm not in the studio or outfield recording, I love taking photos. One of my favorite adventure photographers is Chris Burkhardt, and he has a class called Outdoor Photography, shooting at sunset, sunrise, and night. Chris breaks down the fundamentals of using light to create stunning visuals, and for less than $10 a month, you can learn directly from him and thousands of other creative pros who are sharing their knowledge on Skillshare. So go check out the link in the description below. The first thousand people to click on it will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So as you can see, there's a lot of interesting source material you can get with a mic like this for cinematic sound design, stingers, transitions, those big sort of low frequency hits that you might expect out of a theatrical experience. Turning something as simple as a stove into basically a giant sub punch generator is pretty cool to do. And being able to turn just a sink running water into something that sort of creates droning atmospheres, you can get tonal qualities out of it, you can really layer a lot of that stuff into creating creepy scenes, sound design scenes, ethereal stuff, anything that's really going to call for an otherworldly atmosphere. And of course, playing with springs is always really, really fun. Having giant springs like that was actually the source of a lot of laser sounds in the original Star Wars movies. You can hear those same kinds of slinky hits or, you know, big spring impacts. Having the ability to capture these kinds of things from a very different perspective and provide, again, this big source of sound design materials is really cool and can really open up a lot of doors for either filmmakers who want to get into sound or sound designers who want a very different set of source materials. So at the end of the day, I'd say this microphone is probably best for people who really want to experiment with sound in a different way than just standard setting up a microphone and recording. You can get a lot out of this mic on instruments like a guitar or a harp or really any kind of stringed or bowed instrument. I'm sure with drums, it wouldn't perform as well as you might want. The big impactful sounds generally just end up showing up kind of like big low-end thuds, you can't do as much with those as you might with something that has a lot more high-end character and a lot of frequencies above, say, 300, 400 hertz. That's the kind of stuff that I think this mic really shines on. And being able to pair it with a recorder that's going to capture all the nuance and the subtleties that it's capable of producing, but also not introduce a huge amount of noise, I think is really key to being able to get good recordings out of this. I'd recommend at the entry level price points, looking at something from Tascam. And of course, if you have the ability to pick up something from sound devices, they make world-class recorders with fantastic quiet preamplifiers. So something like that is really really, really well paired with a mic like this. So I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit of what the LOM G phone is capable of. If you want the sounds that I recorded raw or ended up designing for this video, they're available for free on my website at the link down in the description. You can also check out LOM Audio and pick up any of their really interesting and unique microphones at their website, also in the description. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, so come follow me over there. And as always, thanks for watching.